shortly after the Gloire class was laid down, the Marine Nationale had moved on to experiment with iron-hulled warships, with the Couronne. But even before Gloire had hit the water, designer Dupuis de Lhomme had worked out the gun ports would be a little bit closer to the water than he was happy with. He was therefore going to propose a modified version of the Gloires for the 1859 building programme, only to then receive news on the approximate particulars of HMS Warrior, which would outclass Gloire or any near derivative. And so he went back to the drawing board, rapidly returning with another wooden-hulled ironclad design. This was needed as the French iron industry could just about support an ironclad building programme, but stretching that to iron hulls as well as iron armour in any great numbers was a capability that was some years away for them. The new design was to be rather distinctive in that it would turn out to be the only multi-gun-decked broadside ironclad design. Two ships were ordered, named Magenta and Solferino, after recent French victories in battle. The upper gun deck meant that in calmer weather the ships would be able to bring substantial firepower to bear. A warrior, for example, had a broadside of 19 heavy guns if you included the bow and stern chaser, whereas the 52 guns on the magentas could offer a 27-gun broadside if you included the chase guns. And then in rougher weather, where the lower gun deck might not be usable, there would still be a dozen guns on the upper gun deck broadside plus the two chase guns which could be used. The ships displaced just over 7,000 tonnes and could make somewhere between 12.5 and and 13 knots at maximum power output thanks to 3,600 indicated horsepower delivered through a single screw. Armour consisted of a 4.7 inch belt that ran the full length of the waterline with a similar thickness making up a box citadel about 45 metres long which contained the gun batteries which ran roughly from the foremast to the mizzenmast although portals for light and ventilation continued at exactly the same spacing intervals beyond this and were the exact same dimensions, which can lead to some confusion. A small conning tower with a 4-inch armour plate was positioned just aft of the single funnel. Both ships were laid down in late June 1859 and launched exactly two years to the day after their respective keel-laying ceremonies. Solferino then commissioned relatively quickly in late August 1862, while Magenta came into service at the start of January 1863. Solferino could be distinguished from her sister thanks to a massive figurehead in the shape of an eagle, which was sadly painted black a couple of years after entering service and thus was no longer shiny. Their initial gun batteries consisted of 26 164.7mm or 6.48 inch M1858 guns on the lower gun deck and 24 of the same on the upper gun deck, split evenly on each side, with two more in chase positions, one fore and one aft. This somewhat bizarre calibre was thanks to the measurement being the bore width of the French 30-pounder long gun, which had been first introduced at the end of the 1810s and the beginning of the 1820s a legacy calibre that would remain in newer and newer guns in the Marine Nationale until well into the first decades of the 20th century, installed on some French pre-dreadnoughts. However, thanks to the advances in gun technology coming thick and fast in this era, and the broadside battery offering relatively easy replacement options as long as the ship didn't become too heavy, this particular loadout didn't last very long. The two ships would soon drift apart, In 1864, both of them had 16 of their lower deck guns replaced with 194mm or 7.6 inch weapons, a calibre which seems to be a little bit newer, but would again remain very popular in the Marine Nationale over the next 50 years or so. The 164.7mm guns were probably updated from breech-loading rifled guns to muzzle-loading rifled variants at this point, and the two chase guns were replaced with 223.3mm, or 10.5 inch, muzzle-loading rifled shell guns. In 1865, Magenta had her upper gun deck replaced with four 240mm and four 194mm guns, with another four 194mm guns added on the open deck above, in addition to the chase guns. In 1867, she also received wooden sheathing to her hull, and thus would be doubly different from her sister, at least for the moment. 
In 1866 and 1868, new batteries were assigned, but there is some doubt as to if these were actually implemented. Both called for the lower gun deck to be cleared entirely, with small numbers of larger guns on the upper gun deck and the open deck above. In May 1868, Magenta had her whole battery replaced with six 240mm guns on the upper gun deck, and four of the same in the open above, for a total of just ten guns. And then in 1869, both ships were fitted with a final battery of 10 240mm guns on the upper gun deck, with four 194mm guns mounted above in the open, both of the M1864 pattern. Solferino went into the reserves in 1871 with this battery, but Magenta remained in service and had them replaced with M1870 pattern weapons. And at some point she acquired a small number of bronze light guns, mostly for landing parties. Their service lives were relatively short. Both were assigned at first to Cherbourg. Magenta headed over to Veracruz in Mexico in 1867 to help bring French troops over there back home, and in 1875 she was in Toulon when she caught fire and exploded. Solferino went to the Mediterranean in 1865, and as mentioned went into reserve in 1871. By this time she was back in Cherbourg. She moved to Brest in 1878, and she was decommissioned finally in 1882, and ordered to be scrapped in the same year. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.